So in this video, I want to talk about Moonlit Fantasy again. And honestly, what I want to talk about is kind of, it's one of those where I'm getting really annoyed. And the reason being is, for, for a bit of context, I do love to meme a lot when it comes to sort of stuff that goes on throughout the anime seasons. And I've definitely been memeing about the slime table episodes. But that's only in jest, it's only joking, I understand the importance of them, I've read the light novels, even though some think I actually haven't, which is hilarious because my light novel reviews are on the channel, not all of them, but most of them that are what's been covered by the anime. But in context to that, I kind of understand how slime fans feel when it comes to media literacy, because Taking my jokes aside, there are a lot of people that really hate world building and conversations and stuff like that. And Moonlit Fantasy has been getting a lot of, I would say, not like backlash, like massive proportion, but there is quite a few fans that are kind of very disgruntled about this whole idea that the main protagonist isn't doing enough. And I see a lot of comments, and I spoke about it in the last video, but it's getting more spicy because the more I talk about it, the more I get to see some of the comments and some of their feelings and them trying to prove me wrong and saying, well, this and that and all the rest. So I wanted to talk about some of it because I think it's fascinating. And I know some people say, well, don't give it any attention, but I think it's important to discuss these things to demonstrate the lack of logic and thought that goes into it. And some of that comes down to things like, for example, he doesn't do enough. Like, why isn't he trying to oppose the goddess more? And I, I threw a joke in one of my comments saying, well, what did you expect him to do? Do a fly kick into the sky and, like, knock her head off? Like, she's in a different plane. She's somewhere that he can't access. And so it's like, what do you expect him to do? Find a way to get to her? As far as the power scaling goes, I don't even know if he even measures up to her right now. Maybe they are Got, maybe he has the ability to do some harm to her physically if he could get to her plane of existence. I don't know. He doesn't seem to... Well, it hasn't explained it in the anime, so I would say from a perspective of watching the show, he wouldn't know either. Unless light novel fans want to come rolling in with information that I don't possess currently, other than volume one that I've read. But then you've also got the question of like, okay, well then why doesn't he start his own religion? And it's like... <laughs> You do know she can still see things, right? And she has, at one point, teleported him into the middle of a confrontation. So she can clearly would see if he was trying to do something that she didn't want. And then she would maybe make a more heavier, more aggressive move. Which is probably why he's trying to not provoke her too much. Absolutely, he doesn't like her. He hates her guts. He's not going to go out of her way, or out of his way, to help her. He's going to do things in his best interest, but he's also not going to go out of his way to really antagonize her. Because, I, in my opinion, I don't think he knows what she's fully capable of, and he doesn't know what he's fully capable of. And so then it also comes down to this question of, well, but he's tried to get along with the humans while tolerating the goddess's curse. Like, what? why hasn't he, like, sabotaged her assets? Again, that also follows to the religion thing. He can't really go directly against her because he's unsure of what she can do. So it comes down to that. Like, th these comments have been like, oh, but there's so much he can do. Not really. He's very limited because he can't really trust the humans very much. So he's not going to go and find these other factions that oppose the gods because he's already learnt time and time and time again that these humans can't really be trusted. And even if there's a faction out there that can't, that, that opposes the goddess, look at the demons. They're literally as, as opposed as they come, and they use him. So why would he go out of his way to help people that may also be trying to use him? He's learnt the harsh way that these humans are not to be trusted so much. Sure, there are a couple of good ones in the bunch, but there is a good percentage of them out there that are just using and manipulating, which is why he's playing the game of politics. That, like I said in the last video, he's trying to maneuver his assets around to build favor and block them into a corner where they have to beg for his help, and then they have to say, hey, what can you give me that would make me want to help you? And then they have to offer something. He's not going to go out of his way to help unless it's a way of showing power or getting a benefit from it. 
at the same time, he's not going to sit there and burn down an entire village just to spite the goddess. One, that's cruel. He's not a cruel person. And two, he probably knows not to completely provoke her. She can clearly probably see what he's doing, and she's probably sitting there tolerating it for the time being. As long as, as she said, don't put your seed in any of her people. So that's one thing. The other thing would also be, hey, you know, don't poke and prod in her religion. That would be the next best thing. So there's a multitude of factors to play in it. And as far as the main protagonist goes, I think he's making the right moves. Could have he been more aggressive? Maybe. Could have he been more ta tactical? Maybe. But at the same time, he's playing with the cards at best. There's a, t there's a saying that I have when it comes to anime, it's the ivory tower. When you are in that ivory tower looking down at the world and seeing everything in a bigger scope, it's very easy for people to sit there and go, well, I would have done this, I would have done that, I would have done this, I would have done that. But when you're in the character's eyes, your vision is much more limited. You're not in that ivory tower. You don't see everything that the ro the characters see. So it's important to remember that mindset, which is why most of the people in my comments aren't writers, because they don't know how to write a story to save themselves, which is probably why they probably failed their English classes in high school. I think the story is great so far. What I hope is that we do have some good conclusion that is shown in the opening song which is of course him getting into a confrontation with some older faces that were from season one and some of the newer faces being that the heroes i definitely expect there to be a confrontation between him and one of those heroes one particularly a little bit more cowardly a little bit more fake and likes to think that he owns things that aren't actually his so that's one of the things that i'm very very much looking forward to the end of the day i think you're always going to get some disgruntled fans that don't really pay attention to the story they kind of speed run through it because they've got the attention span of a goldfish which is why i i do love to meme about it but in all seriousness i can definitely understand why some fans are getting frustrated because hey you're seeing a world you're seeing it grow expand and all these different characters moving and then you've got people coming in going I want action now and it's like okay but that doesn't really establish anything and it's like well I want action now or they kind of throw this shade of like well the main protagonist should do all these things like I've seen people say that he should help people more but then I've seen people say that he shouldn't help more that he should like destroy the humans and it's like go like the irons kind of mindset of just like wipe them all out and again as I've said in my previous videos I don't think he's a evil malicious person He's just not going to go out of his way to help people when there isn't something to benefit from it because, again, time and time and time again, he has been screwed over. He's got some trust issues. Maybe he's a little bit cold and calculated. I don't think there's anything necessarily wrong with that either. He's going to do what benefits him and those around him that he wants to help alongside of him, like the two companions that he has alongside of him another question that I come down to is characters like Toma and Mia how are they going to interact as the story progresses I find Toma she's a little bit crazy in my opinion especially in the first volume I learned a lot more about how like how obsessed she is with the idea of almost role-playing everything to her is role-playing every single moment is can she play out that fantasy hero samurai kind of character that she wants to play out while mia is very much attached to the main protagonist and i see her as like an albedo or an albedo however you want to pronounce her name where she would destroy anyone that would get in his way even if he didn't want them destroyed she would just get rid of them in secret because she just does not like you look at the previous episodes with that kid that kind of turned in that sludge she just got rid of him because you got in the way of my master she, I think if he knew what she'd done, I think he would have been a little bit agitated that she went behind his back to do something without actually telling her. But she went behind his back and killed them because she didn't want him to get in his way further. It's why some of these characters are very interesting. And I look forward to seeing where these characters go in future episodes. Again, love to know your thoughts in the comment section down below. But if I disagree, I'm going to voice them nonetheless. So if you like this video, hit the like, subscribe, and I'll see you beautiful nerds in the next video.